All right, guys, here we are. Uh, this is the last section of note packet number two. It is titled Comparison of Numbers in Scientific Notation and Using Technology. Ha, ha, ha. That's why I have my little calculator here. All right. So here's what we got. Uh, three exercises that I want to just talk through here. The first one, they want you to compare. I'm going to get uh, the right color here. Let me get that going here. They want to compare uh, 1.15 times 10 to the 7th and 8.2 times 10 to the fifth, okay? And whenever they ask you to compare things, basically they're just saying which one is bigger, which one is smaller, all right? Now, we've talked a few times about you really can't add, subtract these scientific notation numbers if these exponents are different, all right? And that is the key to comparing these as well because you're really comparing apples and oranges if these two uh, exponents are different. So first, uh, first things first, uh, we're going to put these two exponents to make, we're, we're going to make them the same, all right? And we've done that before. So these are really, really big numbers since these exponents are positive. So let's change this one uh, to be a 5, all right? So in order to do that, I want to change this to a 5. In order to do that, I would have to move this decimal two places. Okay, so this number is going to turn into 115 times 10 to the fifth. And I'm going to take this number and just leave it the way it is, but I'm going to write it right below it. All right, just like that, so I can kind of line things up. All right, and now if you notice, these two things are the same, and these two things are the same, and these two things are the same. So really, I'm just comparing the 115 and the 8.2. All right, and that's pretty easy to see that this 115 is much larger than the 8.2, so that tells you this number is bigger. All right. I'm going to write that right up here. This number is bigger. But the key is you have to get the exponents to be the same first, and then it's very easy to compare them. All right? Uh, but I guess the question does say which one is smaller, so I should label this one to be smaller. All right, so let's try the second one. And it's very similar, although the second one has negative exponents. So let me just put the numbers up here that we're going to use. All right, 2.063 times 10 to the negative 8th. And 2.197 times 10 to the negative 6th. All right, now same idea as the first one. Uh, what you want to do is get these two exponents the same before you can compare them. All right. Now, negative exponents, um, remember, when you start taking away or adding for negatives, you got to use your rules for adding and subtracting negatives. So if I were, say I were to take this uh, decimal right here, and say I were to move this two places to the right, which seems like, well, maybe that's what I should do, because I want this to change two places, right? But remember, when you move it to the right, it makes this exponent go down to, right? So it'll go down to or subtract to. And if I take a negative 10 and subtract, or sorry, negative 8 and subtract to, I would end up with a negative 10. So that's not, that's not what I want to do. I want to take that one away. So how about if I take this decimal and go two places to the right? That means that it would subtract to from this number, from this exponent, right? So negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Ah, so that would make these the same. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this number and turn it into this. All right, and this top number, I'm just going to, well, I'm going to leave it the way it is. And I'm going to line up the decimals as I write it.
times 10 to the negative eighth, okay? So now I can do the same thing as I just did in example one, is I can compare, I can compare these two numbers, all right? Now don't get all confused and say, oh, wait a minute, I got negative exponents, it's really n small numbers, it's point zero 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 something and that. It really works the same way as ex example one did. This number is 219.7. This number is 2.063. Well, this being bigger, since these are the same now, this being bigger, well, this is the bigger number. All right, this one at the bottom. All right, and this one is the smaller number since that 2.063 is the smaller number. So key is get your exponents to be the same. All right, uh, let's try number three. And again, it's it's similar, but this one, I want you to watch what I do here for this one because this one, we already have the exponents to be the same. So it should be even easier. All right, so I'm just going to put these up here. And notice I'm lining up my, my decimals. All right, and if these are already the same, then I just have to compare the numbers like I normally do with integers or rational numbers or, or anything like that. Um, these ones are the same. I'll switch. Let me switch to red here. These these ones are the same. Okay, I've lined up my decimals. These eights are the same. And I get to the one and the two. And this two being bigger, that tells me this is the bigger number. All right, and this is the smaller number. Okay, so uh, pretty straightforward there. Alrighty, so let me switch uh, layers. That's really all the exercises that I have for you on here, but I want to mention uh, something about the calculator here. Let me bring up my calculator, all right, and let me actually change this uh, to look a little different here. And I have no idea what that is. My daughter put that on there, so we're just going to cover that up. But I want to make this so I can draw on here and, um, you know, look at my calculator at the same time. And I want to show you, um, some people have trouble when they work with the calculator and um, try to see, well not try to see, but they see scientific notation. All right, so I'm just going to move this around a little bit and make my screen a little bigger there. Okay, so uh, say I take a number like 50 and I raise it to the 20th power. Now that's going to be a really big number. And in fact, it's so big, 50 raised to the 20th power, that the calculator, it's too big for the calculator to display it. All right. I get things like this E. And a lot of people see that E and they go, oh, well, it's no big deal. I'll just uh, drop out the E and just add the numbers on. No, your calculator is trying to tell you that this is in scientific notation, all right? And if I were to write that number in scientific notation on my paper, I would probably round it to 9.5. This little 3 tells me leave that 5 the same. But this E takes the place of that times 10, and then whatever comes after that, it's telling me it's raised to the positive 33rd power. So I don't really even need to put that positive there. We'll take that right out of there. I'll just write to the 33rd power. Okay. The other thing I'd, I'd like you to just see for a minute is that sometimes you will be using your calculator, maybe put it in just a, a small number, like 2. And you might raise that number to the ninth power. And that turns into 512. 2 to the ninth is 512. Okay, it got got relatively big, but if I then ra raise that to the ninth power, it gets really big, really fast, all right? And that number on a handheld calculator is not going to be displayed like this. It's going to be displayed in scientific notation. So let me go ahead and raise this number so I can I can get one in scientific notation on, on my screen. Uh, let me raise this to just the fifth power. And all of a sudden, those numbers got really small. Now I'm going to turn on my magnifier so you guys can see this. All right. And I'm going to bring this around over here. And that number got really big, really fast. 
and that number is actually in scientific notation now. And I started with the number 2, so that I, I would write as 8.2, uh, actually this 6 would round it to 8.3 times 10 raised to the 121st power. Okay, so I would write it like, let me bring this around front here, okay, so I'd write it like 8, 8.3 times 10 to the 121st power, okay, and let me magnify that again so you can see that number, the way it's displayed on the calculator. So just be aware that when you run into things like that, oh, I don't want that, things like that E, that means scientific notation on the calculator. Now let me show you just one last example just because uh, we haven't done negative exponents on the calculator. So let me give you an example of that. If I just simply start with a 1 and divide by something like say 20 raised to the fifth power, all right, I hit my equals, that turns into a pretty small number. Again, I can, I can display this on my calculator. But then if I take 1 and divide by something that's bigger, say 20 raised to the 35th power, all of a sudden that turns into scientific notation again. But notice, notice this negative, all right? That is going to be the number, what is it, 2.9 times 10 to the negative 40. 6 power. All right. And again, I can turn my magnifier on if you really want to see that up close and personal. All right. I think I had to move it over for you. All right. So it looked like that on the calculator. All righty. So that little negative there that signifies, hey, I got a really small number. So just wanted to, you to you to see that uh, in case we run into it, you're going to run into it math and science both. You can't just ignore that e. It actually means we're in scientific notation.